Hola, and welcome to this episode of The Road Goes On Costa Rica. With four weeks left, I'm investigating family life in this episode, getting ready to meet the people there and hopefully have a slight understanding of their way of life. If you were to just take a glance at Costa Rican family life, you would think it appears very similar to North American life, but there are several parts of it that make it unique. Many families are multi-generational, and beyond the grandparents, parents, and children, there can also be great-grandchildren, cousins, and other close family members that may be living together. Children will often live at home until they get married, and there is no social stigma for living at home even in your 40s if you have a steady job, which is one of the major differences to North American living. People start to judge a person who still lives in their parents' basements even when they've completed their degree. This practice of not moving out until marriage promotes the sort of family unity that we don't see in North America. Children are often compassionate with older and younger family members, helping to raise their younger siblings as well as helping their grandparents around the house with chores. The embarrassment factor, which is pretty high among teens and school-aged children in North America, doesn't appear as often, as many teens and school-aged children will still hold hands with their parents and kiss them goodbye before heading to school. Marriage remains the most traditional partnership, and often only Catholic marriages are considered official though other civil marriages are commonplace. A common law marriage occurs after three years of living with each other and has the same rights of other kinds of marriages. They have a higher divorce rate of 50%, especially among the younger married couples, and the number of single mothers are increasing, though there are strict laws to hold the father financially responsible for his offspring. Costa Ricans love children and babies, and seem to have an infinite patience with crying babies. Instead of accusatory glares, they will even try to help the mother with a fussy baby. Traditionally, couples would start having families at a young age, and usually they were large families as well. But because women have started to get higher education and out-of-the-house jobs, and because of economic factors, large families are not necessary or fiscally responsible, and the birth rates of this country have lowered. Education equality has led to more women in professional positions, including their president as of 2012. Many households now depend on dual incomes. They often hire a housekeeper for young children. Nannies or daycare are uncommon for school-aged children. In traditional homes, when parents are away, children go to grandparents or older siblings, which increases the family unity we saw earlier. I'm clearly just scratching the surface of what it is like to live in Costa Rica and convey the importance of family and the changing social structure which 21st century countries are dealing with. So in my next episode, I plan to look more into the economy of Costa Rica and discover as much as I can before I leave for my trip. Hasta luego!